What are Germanic languages? I bet the first thing that comes to your mind is German. And actually, you'll be half right, but half wrong as well. German is a Germanic language, along with English, Dutch or Afrikaans. There are some other languages in this group, of course. In today's video, I'll try to tell you more about this fascinating language family branch in simple words so that it'll be interesting even if you're far away from linguistics. So let's start, as they say from the very beginning, to understand how Germanic languages have been formed and how they are functioning, so to speak. Let's have a look at their position in the whole language family tree. Germanic languages is in reality only a branch of one of the language families called Indo-European. This language family represents such languages as English, French, Spanish, Russian and many others, and it consists of these branches. Today we're looking specifically at this one. Germanic languages are spoken natively by a bit more or less than 500 million people all over the world, but predominantly in Europe, North America, Oceania and Southern Africa. As you might imagine, the most widespread language of this group is English, claimed to be the most widely spoken language in the world. English is followed by German and Dutch that all together form a top three of Germanic languages, considering the number of native speakers. The family of Germanic languages can also be divided into subgroups, but here let's pay attention that this subdivision will vary depending on what Germanic languages we're talking about. If we mean to divide all the living Germanic languages into groups, we'll have these two groups, West and North Germanic languages. But it's sometimes possible to see the third group as well, the East Germanic, representing the languages that do not exist anymore. At present, Germanic languages differ from one another, sometimes even to a large extent, and it might be surprising taking into account the fact that they all emerged from one language, Proto-Germanic. Proto-Germanic is what we're going to start with in order to go deeper into history. Proto-Germanic, or else Common Germanic, as they also call it, is a common ancestor of all the Germanic languages that we have nowadays. Everything began with it. Even though this language is said to be a totally hypothetical, unattested language, meaning that there is no actual evidence of its existence, historical linguists came to the conclusion Proto-Germanic was spoken in Scandinavia in the Iron Age, in about 500 BC. It is a descendant of Proto-Indo-European language, considered a common ancestor of all the languages in the Indo-European language family. So we will be thinking about Proto-Germanic as the language thanks to which all the Germanic languages of nowadays share the same history at their earliest stages. As I've already mentioned, Proto-Germanic is said to be a hypothetical language and no documents in Proto-Germanic have survived. But it has been restored or reconstructed by using the oldest existing records. The first comprehensible text in a Germanic language, Gothic in this case, is said to be the Gothic Bible translated by the Arian bishop and missionary Wulfila in the 4th century. Another important artifact with the Proto-Germanic origin is the tombstone, dating back to about 200-450 AD. It is a rune stone that has several inscriptions in Proto-Norse, an Indo-European language spoken in Scandinavia from the 2nd to 8th century and claimed to have evolved as a northern dialect of Proto-Germanic. Germanic was spread around rather big territory, which was inhabited by different various peoples and tribes. This led to the emergence of several Germanic varieties, 
a big number of which was first written in runes. And here has to be mentioned the so-called Elder Fulthark, the eldest runic alphabet from those that are known to us today. Used by Germanic peoples, Elder Fulthark was later simplified to the Younger Fulthark in the 8th century in Scandinavia. There were also the Anglo-Saxon runes, used by Anglo-Saxons as an alphabet. They both are believed to stay in use until around the beginning of the High Middle Ages, 11th century, depending on territory and then, as you might know thanks to this video, runes were replaced with the Latin alphabet that was successfully spreading along with an thanks to the spread of Christianity. Proto-Germanic is believed to be one whole language at its earliest stages of development, though it had multiple dialects. Throughout years and centuries, those differences in dialects grew more and more, until one day all those varieties became so different from one another that they began to exist as proper languages. That's why today we can talk about two, sometimes three, groups, subgroups or branches, call it whatever, of Germanic languages. Now, let's go a bit deeper into this topic and see which group English, Dutch or German belong to. Historically, Germanic languages were divided into three groups, depending on the areas, territories of Europe where those languages were spoken. East Germanic, North Germanic and West Germanic branches. Let's begin with the Gothic language, the eldest of Germanic languages belonging to the East Germanic subgroup that doesn't exist anymore simply because all the languages from this group, Gothic, Burgundian and Vandalic, are dead. One of the documents that has survived in Gothic is the already mentioned today Gothic Bible, the Bible translation from Greek made by Ulfilas. And now it is the oldest artifact, the oldest text written in a Germanic language. Gothic was spoken by Germanic peoples named Goths, who are believed to have ceased to exist by the middle of the 6th century. Even though there was a tribe called Crimean Goth, who are claimed to have lasted more than any other Gothic community. It is unknown until what time exactly, but several historians claim Crimean Goth could have survived until the 18th century. When it comes to two other languages in this group, Vandalic and Burgundian, there is even less information we are given. There are no written texts in either of the languages preserved. The reasons for that might be different. The Vandals, for example, are believed to be migrating from one place to another, from Scandinavia to Portugal and Spain, then to North Africa in the 4th century. Burgundian is claimed to become extinct during the 6th century when the Burgundians began to adopt Christianity. Around the same time, Vandalic disappeared too. Let's have a look now at the North Germanic languages, shall we? North Germanic languages are sometimes called Nordic languages. There are about 20 million people speaking them natively. The languages of Scandinavia, they all have the same ancestor, the Old Norse, the language of the Vikings that is supposed to have begun to develop into different languages, North Germanic languages of nowadays, around the end of the 14th century. Swedish, Danish, Norwegian are said to be more or less similar to one another and the differences are few. And while the Scandinavian languages from the mainland share a lot in common, the island languages, Icelandic in particular, has saved and preserved a lot from its ancestor, Old Norse. In contrast to the previous language branch, the North Germanic languages are likely to have many texts preserved, many texts that have survived to these days, the majority of which was written in Iceland. There are a lot of so-called sagas and other mythological literature. And 
Finally, let's have a look at the most widely spoken and the largest subgroup of all three, the West Germanic languages. The branch is divided into other groups as well, apart from English, which is undoubtedly the most widespread language in the world with the breathtaking numbers of speakers worldwide. There are other no less interesting languages in the West Germanic branch, like for example the Frisian language. In reality languages, because as it turns out there are three Frisian languages spoken in three different areas. Surprisingly, Frisian is said to be the oldest relative to English, however it might be rather controversial, considering for how many centuries Frisian had been influenced by Dutch, for example. Anyways, there is a number of 80% on the internet claiming to be the percentage of lexical similarity with English. Afrikaans is another West Germanic language that catches attention, evolved because of the Dutch colony in the beginning of the Dutch East India Company in the 17th century. Afrikaans is a very similar to Dutch language, with a number of loan words from German and French. And for the last Yiddish, the language that may look really out of place in this language branch, but historically it's been a part of Germanic languages. Yiddish was supposedly born in the 10th century in the area of the Rhineland, Western Germany, when it was inhabited by the Ashkenazi Jews. Even though the language originated from High German, it went through so many changes throughout centuries that now it is quite different from its ancestor. Yiddish has elements of Hebrew, Aramaic, Romans and especially Slavic languages. It is written mostly in the Hebrew alphabet and seems to be quite an unusual Germanic language, doesn't it? I think for the last part of this video we should look at Germanic languages in perspective, so to speak, and see what special characteristics Germanic languages possess, making them differ from other language families. And in order not to bore you with all those linguistic terms and words, I'll try to put it in simple words and mention the most important things, all right? The first thing I think you should know is the so-called Grimm's Law, which explains the essential linguistic stage in history. We're talking about the sound changes that helped the Proto-Indo-European develop into the Proto-Germanic. On a very basic level, we can look at this example. If you'd like to know more about this topic, don't forget to read about the Werner's Law along with the Grimm's one. Germanic languages have been influenced greatly by other language families. English, for example, has been influenced by Latin and French a lot and in different moments of history. Other Germanic languages also got some loan words from French, but it can't be compared to English. Here's just a little example of all the loan words from French that we have nowadays in English. The whole topic of Germanic languages is rather controversial. As we have seen today, the common ancestor of all the Germanic languages that we have nowadays Proto-Germanic is a hypothetical language, which means nobody can tell us for sure if it existed or not, how it looked like, how it sounded, but nevertheless, it doesn't make the whole topic less interesting. I'd even say it makes it even more intriguing, doesn't it? I hope you found and learned something new with me today. If you enjoyed the video, I'll appreciate a good comment from you down below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Trust me, these little things help my channel a lot. As always, all the interesting links to my website, my Instagram and support page are down below. Visit if you'd like to. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one.